Hi guys and welcome back. This is City Skylines 2, San Francisco, the alternative version. As always, I'm your host and creator, Legio, and we are now on to episode 10. It's kind of hard for me to believe. We're finally in double digits. Uh, but in the last episode, which was a two-parter that I do suggest you check out, uh, we built this pretty spiffy cargo hub down here. I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. Uh, if I take off this view, you can see there's no real complaints coming out of the hub itself. The neighborhood's complaining about high rent, but I can live with that. They'll have to live with it. Um, as for the city proper, there's the typical problems that cities face. They're literally dying in the city. Some traffic accidents here and there, so hopefully everything works out. Hopefully insurance pays out. But anyways, uh, for this episode, what I'm thinking is to help out the city proper because they're having some fire issues and stuff like that. I've noticed when I let the game run, uh, we need to get some more city services in. Uh, especially medical and death care. That, that's that been an issue I've been watching as the city kind of just runs. So I think we're gonna do that this episode. We're also gonna repurpose this highway right here, I believe. And by repurpose, I mean kind of rebuild it, um, and make it look a little bit more like what I had in mind uh, when I started the game. We're also gonna work on this area down here. These factories are gonna come out and we're gonna try to repurpose this into some residential, high density, stuff like that. We'll see how it turns out. So let's go ahead and uh, get into the episode, why don't we? Enough stalling, let's just get right to building. Alrighty guys, so we start this build off by first demolishing everything in this area. We take a whole industrial sector just to start the episode. But we don't really need that industrial sector anymore, not since we built our cargo hub area. It's got plenty of industry down there. And I want to start the episode off by doing this because ground pollution takes a long time to dissipate. So I wanted to give it as much time as I could to recede, and it's still not gone by the end of the episode. It just takes so long for it to go away. But I felt pretty comfortable uh, getting rid of this industrial area because the industrial demand is so low. That's not going to really affect anything with the economy, I think. I think we're going to be fine not having it. But as you can tell by the title of the episode, we basically rebuild the highway that I've been talking about doing forever. So we finally got around to it. And we use Highway 80 in San Francisco as the influence for this. Uh, when I was building the highway, I really wanted to make sure it was a double-decker highway. And I'll talk more about that later in the episode in a live play that kind of breaks the episode in half, like an interlude. So I don't want to give too much away in the fast play. But it did take a lot of inspiration from Highway 80. And it was pretty difficult to build because pillars in this game are just a killer. Uh, it's one of the, uh, that's what made this really difficult was getting the pillars just right. I'll talk more about that in the live play. So we come out here to where I believe is Treasure Island. I can't remember. I even had someone in the comments tell me what this island is, I think at one point, and I completely forgot. That's my bad, but I'm pretty sure it's Treasure Island. I'm never going to fully build out here. This is probably the most I'm going to do in this area. And I kind of use this as a chance to practice terraforming and working with ramps with the highway. Learning how to slope it properly and make the roads look good, nice and smooth and connected. So I'll probably never go back out there. Sorry if you want me to. And then we come back into the city proper and just kind of start setting up some of the roads for whenever this highway does come through because the intention of this highway was that when it was built, it was disruptive, it was very disruptive to the community and it kind of bisected the community and I try to make the roads reflect that. You'll see that they kind of dead end and it looks like there was once a neighborhood there and then they got cut in half and that was the overall goal I was trying to achieve with that. And then the most difficult part was uh, connecting the highway up to that bridge. That was a true pain that took me a long time and some off screen work because that bridge it's like 50 meters high and I'm trying to take it all the way down to about a 20 meter height for the highways. So that was a true challenge. And then uh, you can see here I'm trying to get everything double deckered and looking good. Um, to accomplish it we had to make some concessions. I'll talk a little bit more about that in the live play as well. But we had to uh, have different numbered lanes for each highway. And it actually ends up working out because you can't really tell from certain angles. You can only tell when you really get down and then look at it. So anyways, uh, that's kind of the little ramblings. Uh, we're going to get into the history lesson for the day. And today's history lesson will be kind of a short one because I have other stuff I want to talk about. 
but I thought today would be kind of fun to talk about the uh, highway revolution in in America because it's kind of a unique and fascinating story that really affected multiple major cities throughout the country uh, and San Francisco is no different it was affected just not to the extent of some cities so let's go ahead and dive into that real quick shall we so the history of the American highway system goes back to when cars first started rolling out of the factories and this was circa late 1800s early 1900s and America was still adopting and adapting to the automobile. Travel at the time was still primarily done by horseback, train, steamboat, or your own two feet. Automobiles were primarily viewed as frivolous luxury items of the rich that they would use on the weekends, but others did see them as an opportunity, one of them being Mr. Henry Ford. As many already know, Ford implemented a moving assembly line to greatly increase production and greatly reduce the price of the car between 1913 and 1914. A vehicle we are all probably familiar with, the Model T, could be purchased for around $575 in 1912 and that price would drop to $290 in 1927. This gave the common American the ability to purchase a car and implement it into their lives. I could implement a car into my life pretty easily at that, at that price. That's my monthly payment on a car. Jeez, good for you. This gave the Americans the ability to move further distances with greater ease, creating a demand for a better road system. So in 1916, the United States Congress passed the Federal Aid Road Act to create a national road system. This act was primarily intended to provide states with funding to create rural roads to assist services such as the Postal Service and give farmers a way of getting in and out of urban centers to sell their goods. Following this, we get the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1921. This act further expanded on the previous act, but allowed the federal government to go 50-50 with the states in funding. It also authorized someone we are all more or less familiar with if you know American history, uh, General John Pershing, to draw up a map that would be beneficial to war efforts. And this resulted in the first topographic road map of the United States, also known as the Pershing Map. I'll put an image of it up on your screen. In 1926, the highway system got its official numbering system, which made it much easier to navigate the system. If you've ever driven in the roads in America, imagine driving them without a numbering system. You won't know what exit to take, you won't know what highway you're on, you just have to pretty much know where you're going. But that changed in 1926, so that's a great implementation. In 1953, Americans elected former World War II hero Dwight D. Eisenhower in the office. And almost immediately, he began plans for expansion and standardization of the American highway system. He formed a committee led by prior Army General Lucius Clay to develop the plan. The committee put forth a 10-year, $100 billion program that would connect American cities with populations greater than 50,000. So they focused on population uh, density, 50,000. So your major cities at the time got it. Eisenhower took Clay's plan to Congress and it was passed in 1956 and it became known as the Federal Highway Act of 1956 because these things have amazing names, very creative names. Uh, just a fun fact to slip in here too. Eisenhower originally wanted all the roads on this to be toll-based and Clay talked him out of it. Instead, uh, the roads would be funded by a gas tax. And I, don't know, and I don't know about you, but I actually would prefer to pay a gas tax over the gas I use rather than having to deal with toll booths everywhere I go. That's just my opinion, so I thank you, Mr. Clay. Work began in 1956, and the highway system was proclaimed to be completed in 1992. But as anyone who knows anything about driving in America on the highways, the work is never done. The impact of the highways is certainly a mixed bag. To construct these roadways through already established cities, many neighborhoods were paved over, disconnecting cities, removing residents, polluting cities, and all the other ailments that can come with highways. And oftentimes, minority neighborhoods were the ones targeted for demolition and displacement. And this displacement would hurt the minority communities by disrupting already established businesses and homes, causing families to lose whatever semblance of wealth they had already built up. Because imagine this uh, family builds, builds their home there, they build a business, and then all of a sudden the government comes in, 
takes it using eminent domain, bulldozes it, paves over it, and tells you to just go figure it out. And many struggled to figure it out. And this happened to many, many families. Many minority communities just didn't have the political power to prevent these actions at the time, while predominantly white communities had the political influence to prevent highways from tearing up their backyards. So, you know, you can see how that kind of played into it. Highways also, though, enable the growth of suburban communities. People who owned a car can now traverse to the city core for work and leave at night to a nice quiet home far away from all the city problems. Due to racist housing policies, however, many minority people simply weren't allowed to purchase homes out in the suburbs and it kept them in the city where they likely had just lost their homes. So you can see the problem that's starting to develop here. Now to tie this in with San Francisco, because we are building in San Francisco. Plans to lay roads in San Francisco date back to the 1940s. When the Federal Highway Act of 1956 came out, many San Francisco residents responded by protesting the highways coming into the city. This, is, this came to be known as the Freeway Revolt, and it caught on through all of California, but we'll focus on San Francisco for right now. The people here were able to prevent the construction of many highways throughout the city. I believe they prevented like 7 out of 10 was the number I saw. I didn't write it down. I should have wrote that down. But looking at a map of San Francisco compared to other U.S. cities, you can clearly see the impact this had. A city of San Francisco size would typically have highways running every which way, but they kept the city more or less highway free, which is pretty impressive. I mean, where I live in St. Louis, we have highways going everywhere, and then my family up in Chicago, highways going everywhere. So, it is impressive. So, now like with any discussion I give with history though, I glossed over a lot. This is one of those topics that can just keep getting deeper and deeper the more you dig. It's a topic that did impact every American and I'd say it had a worldwide effect with its economic impact. And other countries used our system and adopted it to an extent. So, I'd strongly suggest you look into it for yourself. It does seem dry at the beginning, but it is pretty interesting once you delve in. I, I found some things I found pretty interesting. And I mean, if you're watching this video, you most likely find these kind of things interesting to begin with. Now, as for my opinion on highways, I do find them essential. Uh, I do enjoy being able to drive from, say, St. Louis to Chicago nonstop on my own time, my own dime. And I know more or less what to expect on the way there because it's all standardized. I like the ability to have the I like the ability to drive across the country, and again, I know what I'm going to get from St. Louis all the way out to Los Angeles. I know what to expect. However, I'd rather not be at the expense of public transit. Um, I live in a suburb of a major metro area, St. Louis, and I can attest that my suburban city lives and dies by the highway that runs through it. The only public transit we have out here is a pretty weak bus system. And any attempts to improve our public transit are blocked by the old adage, we can just drive there and they think public transit is going to bring crime out to our community. I don't necessarily agree with them, but what do I know? And this is pretty frustrating because public transit has so many benefits for a community and just, it just wants, and these people just want to keep their head in the sand more or less. Also, just looking at how the city's got dissected by highways, I'll probably put some examples up right now. Um, it's just frustrating to me. I can concede you might need highways to run through a city at times, but come on, we can surely find a better way at this day and age to figure things out. I mean, I'm not an engineer or road designer or urban planner or anything like that by any means, but I do think we can do a little bit better. Anyways, that's my rant. Uh, look into it and make your own opinion. I placed the references down below along with a short YouTube video by Vox that you might find interesting. And now with our history lesson done, we can get some YouTube comment shout outs done. So let's go ahead and get into those. The first one we have here is from, I believe that's Wonderfrist, saying our commentary is good and they're surprised they only have 200 subs and to keep it up. Well, thank you, I appreciate it. I hope we get more subs after this video. Appreciate that because I always feel awkward doing commentary because I'm basically talking to a computer screen when I do this. And I'm more of a people person. So, thank you. Moving on, we got another comment from Somber Killer saying the scale looks very realistic. Awesome job. That was for the cargo hub, and I appreciate that. Scale is one thing I try to focus on with this, so it makes me happy you agree that I nailed it. 
Then we got a couple of comments from Meathale BSC. First one is, if I post a video every three days, they'll be happy with that. And I'm not bothered if I do voiceover or live commentary. Uh, probably be doing voiceover because it's just easier for me. Thank you. I appreciate that. Then we had a little bit of a chat here saying uh, the offices basically make more money. They're like money printers. Trust me, I know that. I'm just, I'm not to it yet. Uh, they are coming though. And by creating larger plot homes, I just create more high rent issues to solve that, build high density. Um, at the time, I did not know that. They are correct, I believe. And uh, I just put a little, I did make a little note. And then I just responded basically saying, I am a city painter instead of a city player or planner. Like I, when I build these, I just build what I think looks good. So anyways, that's it for those YouTube comments. That's it for our history lesson. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you guys did enjoy the history lesson and would like your comments read on screen, please make sure to leave one down below, leave a like, all the typical YouTube stuff. And here in a little bit, we'll get back into live play to kind of go over what we did. Alrighty guys, we're going to do a quick live play interlude just to kind of go over what we built and what we're going to build in the second half of the episode. So for the first half, we went ahead and rebuilt this uh, highway here. This is our little homage to Highway 80. And I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. Uh, let's talk about what we like and then the things we don't like. Um, first off, I really like how I was able to get it to be a double decker. To make it happen though, we had to make some concessions. The road underneath is a two lane. The top road is a four and a five lane. And I can live with that because when we zoom out, you can't see that second lane. So it's an out of sight, out of mind kind of feel for me. Um, there's some pillar clipping you'll notice throughout, but I can live with a little bit of clipping right now. I don't have any way to remove pillars that I'm aware of. So just living with it. When that becomes an option, I'll probably come in here and uh, commit my version of a pillar genocide, so to speak. So uh, the other thing I like is I really actually do like this interchange right here. It's a bit of a mess, but I base it off the Rincon Hill interchange, which I'm going to be putting on your screen right now. Um, I Again, it's not an exact replica. I don't do replica work. That's just not what I like. Um, but I think I capture the essence of it. Uh, it looks so much better whenever I terraform and put some hills and put the hills, the trees, and the bushes in there. It just looks so much better. Um, the other thing I like about this is uh, if you notice during the simulation, we had terrible traffic flow in the city coming off the interstate, but we really fixed it up with this interchange right here and this little, what I call an A junction right here. I don't know what this would be in reality. I, I have no idea, but I, I don't know. It looks good to me. I like it. Uh, but we achieved it with kind of a spaghetti structure here, and I, I like spaghetti if it makes sense. Uh, Spaghetti interchanges and junctions to me, they always look good as long as they make sense. Uh, I don't know how else to describe that. I'm not, I'm not a traffic or a highway engineer. But I do like the way this looks because it's really compact, but it looks like everything flows naturally, you know? So I do like that. Uh, I broke some of the rules. I typically don't like to do left-hand exits. That's not something you typically see in America. You do see it sometimes though. So, and I thought in this situation it'd be appropriate. But, moving on to some things I don't like. I don't like this bridge. Uh, you probably saw me tear out the other bridge I built that had the highway on top of each other. Um, it was just too many pillars. I, I did not like the pillars on it. It, it was just too much. Um, and I'm not really a fan of the way this does. I think these, uh, I think these pillars are just too close to each other for my taste. But I'm going with it because I think it looks better than uh, the other option I had. And I tried a few different bridges here and this is the one that I, <laughs> I hated the least. So I went with what I hated the least there. But otherwise, yeah, I really like, I do really like this, uh, this highway we got built, especially when we zoom out. I think when this side over here fills in and this fills in a little bit better, this is gonna look really natural to me. So yeah, again, last time I'm saying it, really like it. So for the second half of the episode, I think what we're gonna do is uh, get some healthcare going because if we zoom out, I have egg on my face because the last time I was in this view, I saw a whole bunch of uh, requests for medical, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So they made me look silly. Uh, I don't know, we'll probably have medical right here because we had a traffic accident. You need to figure out your life. 
And yes, I know that's my fault for making that, uh, that highway like that, but you'll live. So I think we're gonna go ahead and put a hospital right in here. I think that's a nice central location for the city. It's near the highway. I noticed, there we go. Finally, someone needs an ambulance. Um, I've noticed that a lot of hospitals are near the highway and I think that's just for the ease of uh, serving the region so you can get on the highway and get to them really quickly. But enough of me sitting here rambling. Let's go ahead and get into the build and hopefully you guys enjoy the rest of the episode. Alrighty guys, so it's right back into the fast play and I'm gonna go ahead and apologize ahead of time. It's really nice weather where I'm at right now. It's like 60 degrees and the sun is shining. So I went ahead and opened up my office window to enjoy it. So if you hear birds in the background, that's just them by the tree by my window. Also my wife's cats are sitting in the window. So they may make some noise along with the dog who's somewhere around here. And she's just a walking noise factory. And whenever I open that window, it's almost as if mother nature herself wants to create all the background noise she can. But I just want to enjoy the weather, so hopefully you all forgive me. So what are we doing on screen here? Uh, we are starting to develop the area around the hospital, because in my mind, the hospital itself would generate a lot of wealth in that area because of the doctors and you know the specialists that be working there. So they'd want some higher end apartments. So I'm gonna rebuild this neighborhood in a little bit. You're gonna see I rezone a whole lot of stuff into medium row housing. And I really like the way it starts to turn out. Uh, but we start by first, I'm really kind of experimenting with these uh, parking lots here um, because I start going kind of nuts with uh, the developer mod, the developer mode, it's not a mod, developer mode. And you're gonna see I start putting parking lots and parking spaces everywhere. A lot of this is uh, me experimenting with what looks good and what works. Um, it'll probably get fine-tuned as we go along. Uh, I'm pretty excited for how this can really, uh, how this can really help my city. I wish I had known about this, you know, a few months ago when I started building. So now I gotta go back and like put this in, but that's okay. I mean, we're on a real time frame here. But uh, you guys have also probably noticed that this video playback's a little choppier than usual. And there are a couple reasons for that. One, during this project, I had a whole bunch of videos of me building uh, primarily the highway. And then this area took a little bit of work. And what I do is uh, I take all these videos and I edit them down and I end up not using half of the videos. Uh, I end up cutting a lot of it. And then I try to stitch all those videos together that I do keep to where it makes the most sense. And I'm not the best video editor, so I probably don't stitch them together very well. But my goal is for it to more or less just make sense and carry the story I'm trying to convey, which is I'm building an interchange, I'm building parking lots, you know, not complicated stories, but I want it to make some sense. And so that when you turn your head away for 30 seconds, you can come back, you're not completely lost. Also, the second reason that the editing probably feels a little different is uh, I didn't edit this on my typical home computer, at least the uh, video cuts. All the editing, all the audio editing I'm doing on my home computer because that's where my mic is. But all the video editing was done on a laptop, all the rough cuts. And um, yeah, I was away for work and I had the laptop and I had access to the videos. So I just kind of see if I could edit the videos and it turned out I could. So I did an experiment and it more or less went fine. Uh, the laptop isn't as powerful as the computer. Uh, so DaVinci Resolve, that's what I use, version 18 now. Go get it if you want it, it's great, it's free. Uh, so anyways, DaVinci every once in a while would sputter and it did die once actually. It just kind of stopped working. But luckily I saved the projects pretty religiously so I didn't lose any work. Also the screen wasn't as big as my typical monitor so that was a little different and it took some getting used to but I got around it. But the main thing that I struggled with was searching for all the little tools in DaVinci because I moved my, my uh, main screen of DaVinci Resolve around quite a bit at home to what I like and what I use. So I just had to get used to how they have the default settings because it's been a while. Uh, I got pretty spoiled on how I had it. Uh, here we start building the hospital out. Uh, and my main goal was um, I'm tired. I tried to have this road come up into a roundabout because I see a lot of hospitals with roundabouts. And then I have a, I'll eventually build an alleyway that actually connects the hospital to the road, to the road structure. And I like the way it turned out. Um, it's not on that main road, so you won't get a whole lot of backup, I think, here. Right there, I connect it. And I really like how that looks, actually. Um, I think that roundabout turning into whatever shape you'd even call it. I don't know what to even call that shape. It's like a round square. 
Uh, I don't know. But I do like the way that turned out. I went ahead and put some offices in this area because in my mind, those offices would be medical facilities like uh, cancer treatment places, um, fertility treatment places, you know, name whatever service you would have that doesn't necessarily need to be in the hospital, but will be near the hospital. That's where they would be. So, and then I pretty much just flushed this area out with um, some parking lots. A lot of that was done off screen because to me that's very tedious and boring. You guys probably don't want to watch that. If you do want to watch it, literally just uh, YouTube up City Skylines 2 parking lot. Uh, that's where I learned how to do it was a, another YouTuber's videos. Worked really, really well. So, yeah, I think the result of this is it turns out really well. Just on the back side here, I'm putting some bushes and trees to kind of tidy the area up and then do some detail work. Uh, it's not City Skylines one detail worthy but for for our limited assets and everything i've got right now i i actually think it turned out pretty good you know it doesn't look bad i'm also not fine-tuning things as much because i just <laughs> i kind of just want to get things done and move on uh that may change in my next build if we have some better tools to work with but anyways i did want to take some time to talk about some things i've been seeing in the online community uh with city skylines too um, the first thing is that I really want to address is, is the game worth buying and is it playable? And my answer to that is yes, it is playable. Is it worth buying? I'm going to leave that up to you. Um, it was worth buying to me, obviously. I bought it. I am enjoying the game, uh, especially now that I've found a dev mode, which I get the argument. It shouldn't take me finding dev mode to enjoy the game, but it is what it is. Reality is I found it and I like it, so I'm staying with it. Um, as for playability, there's a caveat to it. Um, it is playable, obviously. I'm playing it right here. Uh, I don't know how replayable it is, if that makes sense. Building your first city to me is a lot of fun because it's new and it's fresh and you're figuring out all the tools and you're figuring out how the economy works. You're just figuring all that stuff out, which is great. Um, I'm not so much into the weeds kind of guy. I'm a city painter, but it's still a lot of fun to do the first city and see how things run. But the main problem I have with vanilla games, especially a sandlot or a sandbox mode game, um, all your builds end up kind of looking the same. And it's not the developer's fault, in my opinion. Uh, it's because all the buildings you get are the same. And what I mean by that is like the police station, the fire stations, hospitals, they all look the same. There's no unique architecture. And uh, so that's the main complaint I'll ever have about it is it's hard to get unique flavor. The most unique flavor we can get is uh, you know, how we build the roads more or less and how we build our public transit, which, you know, and I get that from the developer standpoint. You're not gonna sit there and make 20 different fire stations. They're not gonna do that. Uh, that's where the modding community and the asset creators is, are gonna come in, which leads me to the point of they should have had the modded community ready a lot sooner. Um, I'm extremely frustrated by that. I'm not even gonna lie. That's, to me, extremely frustrating because what made City Skylines 1 so much fun was uh, the mods and the assets. Like, I think Paradox and Colossal Order kind of missed the point of their own game. Uh, you know, I, I wasn't in the meetings, obviously, I'm not a developer, but I think if you really looked at the communities, the main things we were talking about was the mods and the assets that were coming out on the Steam Workshop. Because um, I know for me, uh, I'd lose a little bit of interest in the game, like I lost a big interest in the game, that's why I stopped posting YouTube videos for a long time. If you followed my old series of Mahegan, it's still up there, but I just lost interest because I didn't know how to do a lot of things to make a successful channel and I didn't have the time. But I still played the game, and anytime I'd start to lose a little bit of interest, it just so happened, a new mod would come out. Like. When, I remember when Intercession Marking Tool came out and I saw it and I thought that was the greatest thing I've ever seen in a game. And that just brought me right back into the game. And then the Network Multi-Tool, I can't remember which one came first, but Network Multi-Tool came out and I was sucked right back into the game. Um, that's just how it went for me. So that, that I think the uh, developers kind of missed on. Uh, because with those, you know, I was able to build different kinds of cities. like. Uh, Mahegan is a Chicago in inspired city and I really love that city. Um, I still have that save. I may show it to you guys. If you guys want to see uh, Mahegan uh, post YouTube, uh, I recreated it on my own time. Uh, if you want to see it, let me know and I'll do a quick tour of it. I don't 
like I'll show it to you it's no problem actually I think I'll just do it anyways I don't know we'll see um, but I was also able to create like a Florida city and a English inspired city I don't have those saves anymore so I'm sorry I can't show you those I lost them being an idiot one day and went on a mass delete spree so those that's what I think made city skylines one successful was the community it wasn't necessarily the like no hate towards the developers but the community is what really made that game for me and uh, yeah so with all that said we do have some mods coming out and you're seeing me play with a lot of them like the surface tool and other stuff like that in the next video that comes out I have a brand new mod that I'm gonna be playing with I don't want to spoil that yet so make sure you check out the next episode it's gonna be kind of a unique episode um, and Thunderstore has made all that possible so I'm really enjoying that so if you are a contributor on Thunderstore thank you for that because I could never figure out how to do this stuff um, so yeah that's basically where I'm at uh, I saw the other thing I want to address is the toxicity of the fan base um, I've really seen a whole lot of what I'd call toxicity um, you're always gonna have toxic people that's just life um, like I remember when Halo 2 first came out like I was on the first that was my generation's defining game like that was it for me and that game's amazing we still had toxic people on there you're always gonna have toxic people in life especially on the internet like you think you think paradox and class order would know that so you know just deal with just ignore the toxic people and listen to the valid complaints of the community the people who want who do put the constructive criticism out there like i try to make a constructive criticism i'm not hating i can't develop a game so i don't know what what they go through but you know just Listen to what the actual players are wanting, and I think you guys will be just fine. I appreciate the weekly updates. I appreciate the patches. Like, I do appreciate what they're doing. I don't discredit them for trying. I just think they missed the mark a little bit, which it's fine to miss the mark. Just, you know, shoot your shot again. See if you can hit the mark the second time. So, anyways, um, yeah, if they just polish up those things, I think we're good. I think we do have the grounds for a very good game. Uh, I think... I think they got a lot of things right. Like, I do think it runs a little better than City Skylines 1, at least in my experience. Um, that, that's just me, but it may just be I have a more powerful computer now. So, there are things I really like about this game. Uh, I'll probably talk about those a little bit later on because I don't want to spend too much time talking about what I like and what I don't like. I don't want to do a top 10 video in a build when you guys are here to watch the build. So, I'll stop rambling and all that. I'm just going to try to be patient for everything else. So let's see, what do we have going on screen? Now, oh, right, me basically building a whole bunch of parking lots. Uh, yeah, I fell in love with building parking lots. I, there is a, uh, essentially a line tool for building the parking lots. It's, I think it's like the perpendicular parking spaces tool. And I don't necessarily like it too much for one reason, and this is a personal reason. You, if it works for you, use it by all means. Uh, but for me, it's kind of difficult to use it because I have a hard time lining things up. So I end up just individually plopping the parking spaces, which honestly isn't a big deal. I'm used to that from City Skylines 1 when I would build a parking lot. So that's basically what I'm doing. And then what I'll do is I'll uh, use the invisible road tool, the invisible two-way road tool. Don't, don't get confused. It needs to be the two-way for it to work right. Uh, and then I'll just come in and draw the road to match what the parking spaces we're doing. So I really think adding the parking lots and the parking spaces and everything really, uh, really jazzes up the city, makes it look a lot better. Uh, Cause you don't have all that open green space, which don't get me wrong, open green space is good and it's important, but it's also just not realistic to what cities are. Um, cities are, if nothing else, a giant cluster of structures that people use. And the space is very limited so they maximize that space as much as they can and unfortunately mother nature takes the brunt of that so there's not going to be a lot of green space unless it's like a planned park or it's just a weird parcel of land that they couldn't really find a use for um, i know whenever i go around the city of st louis which is where i currently live uh, there when you go into like a high density public area sure there's green spaces around but they more or less a lot of the space that isn't being used it just wasn't feasible to use it for a building so i mean that's what i observe i'm not a urban designer or anything but i really feel like 
I'm one of those people that if it doesn't benefit the community, then we can do something with it, you know? That's just kind of how I feel like, oh, we don't have a use for this little plot of land. Well, let's just turn it into a park now. When they should have thought differently, they should have put a park anyways, but to me, parks always seem like, oh, we didn't have any other use for this land. Let's just squeeze in a park right here and it makes sense. That's just how I kind of view some of those things. But uh, that's another rant. I basically just build another little neighborhood over here. I don't know how much I like this neighborhood. It's kind of an awkward spot because of the, the rail lines right there, but I wasn't deleting the rail rock, those rails. Uh, they were staying no matter what. So I kind of just built around them. And there are communities like this throughout the world where it's just kind of an awkward little area that you build into and you just got to make it work. So developers would come in and make it work as the best they could. So that's what we basically did there. Um, and to backtrack to uh, the highway, you can see how that highway, um, at least in my mind, how that highway basically cut the city, it bisected the city, and I hope you guys get that effect. Uh, that's what I was really going for here, because while some roads will pass right underneath it, a lot of the roads are going to end up terminating before they even reach it, and I was hoping to make it look like those roads once carry all the way through. Like that used to be one giant community that was connected by a series of roads, but now it's just connected by a few. So hopefully that, that was accomplished and you guys agree that I did a good job of that. Um, it more or less looks good. I know this area right here, this area right here of the city is not going to be a focus for me. Um, it just isn't. It, it just, it's not one of the areas that I even thought out and advanced. So. Anyways, with all that said, we're going to be getting into a live play here in a little bit, so hopefully you guys are enjoying, and you know what to do down below if you are. Alrighty guys, so we are back live. We're going to look over what we built, talk about it a little bit, and then talk about what we're going to do in the next episode. So yeah, the main focus of this episode was rebuilding this highway. Uh, I know I do a lot of episodes dedicated to the highways, but that's just how it is early on in these kind of things. You got to make sure they're done right. Yeah, I say I really like the way this turned out. Um, I think it's going to look really good whenever we start getting this area filled in. Problem is, it's still pretty polluted over here, so I just got to give that time to dissipate. But yeah, I think the highway looks pretty good. If you zoom in, there's bumps and bruises, so we just won't zoom in. If you don't see it, it doesn't exist, right? Um, I also built this hospital over here. Got to say, I really like the way it turned out. Probably one of my better hospital builds, to be honest. I always struggle building those, because, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know why, I just do. Um, and I did leave some room for later on putting like above ground or underground parking, like over in this area. Uh, I haven't unlocked it yet, so I tried to have some fore, forethought in uh, where I was gonna put that. So I really like the way that turned out. We also kind of uh, upscaled this area right here, took all the low density out, put medium, density in because that just makes sense uh, I know in st. Louis where I live uh, near Barnes Jewish Hospital if you look that up there's a whole bunch of high high rises and stuff like that where doctors and you know the specialists all live so this makes sense to me you know and it looks good it, I, I think it really fits in that area and we tried to plug in a little area over here I think this will look a lot better when we get more detail like down in here it'll kind of seamlessly flow so yeah that's basically what we got built out in this bridge that I don't really want to spend too much time looking at again not too happy with the bridge but it'll work for now uh, so let's talk about what we're gonna do in the next episode so I can get some hype going for that we're probably gonna rebuild this area in here rezone it make it medium density to high density uh, we're gonna treat the ferry district like our financial district so think medium density here and then it eventually just gets taller and taller as it goes in. I'm also thinking we're going to do something with the rails in the next episode because uh, right now they're just kind of going to nowhere. So probably do something with those and then uh, we're going to have to start getting some public transportation and that'll really help some of our traffic issues we have in the city. But overall I'm pretty happy with the way things are shaping up. If you're happy with the way things are shaping up or you're unhappy with the way things are shaping up Please do some engagement in the typical YouTube fashion down below, and uh, I will see you guys in, I believe it'll be episode 11. Yeah, I'll see you guys then.